Yeah, so at the, the Climate Adaptation Conference here in Moor Park today, uh, we had a range of speakers. Uh, really, it was a, a very forward-looking conference. So we, 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 we sort of looked at adaptation uh, of really what farmers can do or what industry needs to do to um, to adapt systems to, to change the weather and, and climate patterns. So um, one of the big themes of the day really was that forward planning or that forward modeling of, the, of maybe where trends are going to, to, to go uh, over the next 20 years or more. So we had speakers from Matt Aaron and L.V. Ruel from, from the Grassland and the Climate Centre Department in, in Moor Park really plotted out maybe some likely scenarios um, for, for, for weather patterns. So we could see that, you know, based on the models, you're looking at more uh, more frequent and uh, severe rain events, but maybe particularly for, for livestock farmers, looking at maybe wetter, um, wetter springs, wetter autumns, milder also, so maybe overwinter growth of pasture being higher. But um, I'm sure lots of farmers will, will be looking at this too and seeing it for, from the last couple of years, maybe drier summers as well, maybe increased um, frequency of drought conditions, particularly maybe in the south and east of the country. So that was interesting to look at that. And then we, we talked a lot then about the mitigations that can be that can be put on top of that or the adaptations in, in the systems. We have to just be clear, we, we had, there was really two distinctive things. There's the, the, there's the climate mitigation strategy. So that's what farmers can do to, to um, to help offset climate change in their own system but then you've got the adaptations is what farmers need to do to survive the consequences of it so big parts of that was really around looking at uh, sword type and and it's breeding for 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 better resistance and better quality particularly for mid-season that was a big thing um, but also you know forward planning in terms of what annual grass production would look like so stocking rates going to be a part of that security on winter feed and how that happens um, on a whole farm basis that's a big thing we we're, we've been talking about that a lot over the last 10 years or more that's not a that's certainly not a new thing like that goes back for a long time at this stage but it's something we have to get people really to focus in on the security of winter feed but when you looked at the models and maybe what the projections were you know not separating the idea of just winter feed from um need to have feed in the yard for weather contingency so not only you know so this this require for a feed buffer for for adverse weather conditions that's a big that is a big issue and will be a big issue into the future and also then really one of the main themes and there was a lot of discussion around that on on um, on the day about how you know how clover swords or multi-species swords but particularly on the legume side how will they work and how will they proceed uh, persist in you know as as maybe the maybe the challenges of climate begin to, to change a little bit. So there was a lot, in a, a lot in a lot of that. So, you know, we have to, I suppose, manage for what we can for the moment, but we have to be looking forward as well and say, as maybe growth patterns change, we'll have to adapt our systems as well.